I do everything. I clean, I cook, I cashier. I do everything for the last 17 years. This is Shitha, the woman single-handedly running Zagul, an Ethiopian restaurant in Reno, Nevada. And she's prepared a whole platter of traditional Ethiopian food for us. We have traditional Ethiopian food for different things from the menu. The main important thing, it's called injera. You use this to scoop the food to eat. You tear this bread a little bit so I touch it, it will be mine. Yes. And then you just pinch the food with it. And then you can eat it. But for the first time, people, I want you to taste it. It's individual. Ooh. I love how squishy, spongy, spongy it is. <laughs> it has a very yeah. sour taste yeah. to yeah. it. Yeah. It's kind of crepe-like. It's malleable. It feels very natural. And when you start eating the injera bread that's the plate, mm -hmm. it's soaked up all the flavors right. from all the dishes. Mm -hmm. Because it has all the holes, it kind of picks up the sauces and the yeah. flavor into it. Grabs it the food better. Yeah, and grabs the food better. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun and tactile. I don't know, I just always like eating with my hands. <laughs> The food just tastes better if you eat with your finger. <laughs> a traditional Ethiopian meal is often served on a big platter covered with injera, a spongy flatbread made from fermented teff flour. Injera acts as both the plate and the utensil, and it's essential for Ethiopian family gatherings and celebrations. In fact, the fermentation Kickstarter airshow is often passed down through generations, similar to a sourdough starter. Since injera is so ingrained in many Ethiopian traditions and celebrations, sharing injera is often associated with respect, love, affection, and connection. Kutfo, which is very spicy, it can serve two ways. It can serve cook or raw. I use a little bit of clarified butter, a little salt, a lot of cardamom, and cayenne pepper. I cook a little bit for us right now here, mm -hmm. but normally you warm the butter, you just put the meat and you toss it and you serve it to so just kind of raw, like tartare. And that's pretty traditional to yes. have it. Very traditional. Zilzil, which is lean beef, a cut in the strips. That one is like the same spice it has, but it goes in the grill and it goes over the onion. It came out sizzling. When I serve it to the people, it come out the sizzling, I say, oh my God. <laughs> this is cayenne pepper, but it has a lot of different spice in there. And this is fresh garlic. And then this is black cardamom. This one you said it had cardamom in it, right? Yeah. I do taste it. Yeah, I like the spiciness of that one. Oh, it's a little bit tangier to me. I do enjoy this texture of this beef and the onions because the onions are also not too cooked. They have a crunch bite to them. It's very hearty. Sourness, the tanginess of the bread combines really well with the savoriness of the meat, the sweetness of the onions. I can smell it come through the kitchen. Japan food is, has yeah. very strong smell. When I make the big pots of onion and the whole people passing here and they say, oh my gosh, what does that smell? And my clothes yeah. might think to smell maybe sometimes for a day or two. Is there an alcohol in this at yes. all? Okay. Yeah. Cooking wine. It like melds together with the onions really well. Yeah, because it goes when it's flaming. In Chinese culture, that flavor you kind of get from a wok. And in Cantonese, it's called wok hei. The heat from the wok, yeah. and that's kind of the, the flavor. Heat, whatever the spice in there, it's like all hold it and they'll flame it. Yeah. What was it like growing up in Ethiopia? Growing up is like people have to help each other, you know. If you have kids, if they have a good income, you have to step in and help your family. If it's not, somebody don't have kids, they don't have anything. There is no social security money, there is no retirement home, there is no nursing home, there is nothing. So you never step in. They take turn to feed those person. They wash their clothes, they just take care of them. 
Having to depend on your neighbors to take care of you, that really influences the food and how you eat it. No matter what you do, you eat together. That's why these things come, you know, because we don't have individual plates for the people to give. They serve you this big platter, they fill it up with a lot of different things. You four of them, five or six of them, you, everybody share. Ethiopia is the largest and most populated country in the Horn of Africa, with its capital, Addis Ababa, located near the center. It's one of the oldest countries in the world, and its borders have shifted over the millennia. Ethiopia was one of the first nations to sign the UN Charter and played a key role in African decolonization, which led to the formation of the Organization of African Unity. Shaped by a rich history from the spice trade, Ethiopian food features bold, unique flavors that blend earthy, spicy, and sour notes. That one is number two, Gorod Gorod. That has chili. You can get a, a lot of the spice. It's like big on flavor. The meat feels more tender. You know when you have something like really fatty, but then something tart comes in, it kind of helps balance it out right. so it's not right. too, It's not too greasy. Yeah, it's yeah. not too heavy yeah, for you yeah, to eat. Yeah. Um, and then the vegetables, you know, there's six different vegetables I have and it's all vegan. With the stems and the leaves, it's just a nice texture to have because there's a bit of a bite to it. Yeah, yeah I like how crunchy the colored greens are, the leafy. The hardiness of the meat, the savoriness, the tenderness, also combining with the leafiness of the colored greens, they're balancing each other yeah, out, you can yeah. feel it. Normally when we make the kutfo, we always has gomen to go with it. And then in the side of it, we have homemade curry cheese. So those three always go together. Yeah. That's why it's so normally served. You also do a coffee ritual. Can you kind of talk a bit about that? How a coffee ceremony started is the man go to work to make money. The woman stay behind to take care of the family. So the woman need to get together and chat or gossip. So they make the coffee because it take long hours. They drink the coffee and they talk and they gossip and they still do the stuff. And then before lunch time, they all go home because the husband come home for lunch. <laughs> so that's how coffee ceremony started. Did you know Ethiopia is the birthplace of coffee? It's true. Coffee has a rich history in Ethiopia, not just as a beloved drink, but as a key part of social life. During traditional coffee ceremonies, people gather to chat, share news, and pass down wisdom through generations. The process takes several hours and starts with roasting green coffee beans until they turn a rich brown, then grinding them with a mortar and pestle and brewing them in a clay pot called the jebina. The coffee is served in three cups. The first, a bowl, is when the coffee is the strongest and most flavorful. The second, tona, is more mild in taste since the same grounds are used. And the last, boreka, is the lightest, signaling the end of the ceremony. Snacks like roasted barley or popcorn are usually served alongside the coffee, but milk is never added. Even though the ceremony has evolved over time, it remains a common and cherished way to connect with others. I've eaten all the bread, so now I can go, actually just start. You go around here. I can just you start go, taking you it. You go around like that, yeah. I want to eat the bowl. You go part like of the plate. that, and then you go like this, this, and eat. Yeah, it's good. Are these dishes important to you? Yes, to me especially, I make it with all my soul because I love to cook. I love to eat food. <laughs> and another thing is, where can you go get Ethiopian food? This you don't get anywhere. No. It's very different. It's very tasty. What is Zago? This shell right here, mm -hmm. in my language, it's called Zago. Zago translates to seashell in Amharic and usually references cowrie shells. Cowrie shells have played a significant role in Ethiopian and African culture for centuries. These small, durable white shells are used to create jewelry, hair accessories, and even instruments like the shekere, which can create calming sounds for infants. Cowrie shells were once used as currency because they were portable and hard to counterfeit, which means that they slowly made their way around the world. So now we know what Zagol is, but why name the restaurant Zagol? When the woman has a baby, they make a baby carrier. The bottom of it, they put these oh. all down in the bottom. So they carry the baby. Every time she moves, just make sound of music. It just make the baby calm and go to sleep. I opened this restaurant in 2007. 
I was nervous when I first opened the restaurant. So what's gonna make me calm? This is a goal and uh, make the baby calm, maybe it can make me calm. Don't get nervous, it's okay, everything's gonna be okay. As a little girl, I wanted to do my own business. I came from really full family back home, so I just wanted to have something on my own. And I also taught myself how to cook. Maybe it was good things that my parents <laughs> didn't have anything because maybe if they have money, maybe I didn't learn anything. Where I come from, if you have money, people have servants. They have somebody to cook for them, but I didn't have that chance, so I have to better myself. <laughs> yeah. Even now, if I go anywhere else at the restaurant and I could eat that food, I might not exactly have what they do, but I can cook it similar. I have that kind of gift. So you can figure out what kind of spices right. are in it. Right. Eating a dish and then trying to recreate it, I couldn't do that. I'll go up to the pantry and I'll pull out some paprika and I'll smell it probably and go, Maybe put it in, yeah. and then it'll taste nothing like what I wanted it yeah. to. You had to practice again and again and again, and that makes it even better. You can feel the love. I feel that way all the time, <laughs> yeah. I wish I don't get old, I can cook forever. <laughs> I know I really work hard, and I put my kids through college, and I pay off my house because of the restaurant. Awesome. I reach my goal for myself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is it meaningful to be able to share these recipes with everyone in Reno? Yes, very. I didn't plan to open a restaurant when I first came here. I've been here over 40 years. It mean a lot to me now. Bringing my culture here is important to me. I'm really happy I opened this restaurant to share my recipe, my food, my culture. I just don't want this restaurant to disappear. If someone wanted to come and take it over, not for any other food, but just the for Ethiopian yeah. food, that's yeah. all I wanted to do. I just don't want it to go away. Chitta says she's always looking for someone to take it over after her, and even says she'll happily teach them everything she knows. Because I'm getting old, I'm getting tired. I want to pass it down to someone who can pick it up after me. Yeah. <laughs> that's all, that's all. <laughs> You put your heart into making this, and we do appreciate and can feel that through the food. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this with me.